Hi, welcome to the Praying with Charles podcast, a podcast devoted to enriching your prayer life with biblical wisdom, real life testimonies, and hands on prayer experience. This is your host, Charles Lochte. Today's podcast is the second podcast of my series, Praying for Our Families from the Book of Proverbs. In this series of podcasts, you will have the opportunity to pray for your loved ones by joining me in praying for my family using the Book of Proverbs as our prayer guide. Proverbs is filled with beautiful wisdom for our daily lives and is therefore a fantastic prayer outline for interceding for our families and ourselves. In today's podcast, I'll be praying for my family from Proverbs chapter 2. If you are unfamiliar with praying the Word or using the Bible as your prayer language, please visit episode 1, Praying from Proverbs 1, for a brief crash course on why we pray the Word and how to pray the Word. As a friendly reminder, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the like button. This will help you stay up to date on anything I upload on YouTube and will also help grow my channel so that our prayer community can grow. If you have any questions about anything in this podcast or you're interested in subscribing to our ministry updates, please leave a comment below or email me at f.charleslochte at gmail.com. If you want to support our ministry, please scroll to the bottom of this video's description for details and how to give to us. Lastly, if you enjoy the background music in this introduction, check out the link in the video description to listen to more. Before we pray from Proverbs 2, let's take a few moments to come before the throne of God and connect with the Holy Spirit. You may take this time to preview Proverbs 2 to familiarize yourself with the language and content in this chapter. Lastly, don't forget the tools I taught you in episode 1 for how to pray the word, especially Thanksgiving. So for the next few moments, Let's just soak to the music, prepare your hearts, engage the Lord, and open up to Proverbs chapter 2. So Holy Spirit, we engage our hearts. We thank you for the throne of grace, Lord, that you have given us access by your blood, that we get to come with boldness before your throne. We thank you for your word, that your word is faithful to every generation. Lord, that you exalt your word even over your name. We thank you for exceeding great promises that we can take before you in praying for our children, our spouses, and ourselves. Lord, we confess our weakness in the place of prayer and ask you to guide our hearts. Lord, that these words would not just be monotonous monotonous cantations but Father that they would be quickened to our spirit that they would be tangible evidence in our hearts that we would have confidence knowing that you hear us when we pray knowing that we're praying according to your will Lord, open up the scriptures to every person that's engaging in this podcast right now in prayer. Give them personal promises for their children, for their families, for their marriages. Open our hearts by the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Father, I ask you to pour out abundant hope. 
just as the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans that through the scriptures we have hope. So Father, as we pray the scriptures to you, we take your words back to you. Fill us with hope, God. Fill us with confidence that these words would become anchors in our soul, that we would be unmoved by the circumstances in our present situations, Father, but we would be moved by faith that you call things that don't exist as though they did. And Lord, we say we love you. We submit to you. In all things, we give everything to you, 100% surrender and abandonment. For you deserve everything, Father. You are worthy. Jesus, of all our devotion and all our attention, you are worthy of it all. And we understand that as we pray these things, that is the expectation, God. That we come as consecrated vessels. Our lives are not our own. So I'm going to start from chapter 2 in Proverbs. Just give a, me a second as I pull my mic out here. I like to move when I pray. It's really hard for me to, to be locked into a chair with a, a microphone in my face. I'm too, uh, I'm too kinetic. And as I mentioned in my first podcast, the way I kind of flow as we pray through the scriptures, I'll read a few verses or a section of verses, and then I'll come back and pray them, depending on how the verses are grouped. So I'm going to read first Proverbs 2, starting with uh, verse 1. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and and apply your heart to understanding... Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. So Father, I thank you for these promises. I thank you for the promise that you will give our children the fear of the Lord, that you'll give our spouses, you'll give my wife the fear of the Lord, you'll give my sons the fear of the Lord. Father, that your promise is that they will discover the knowledge of you, that you will give them wisdom, and that from your mouth comes knowledge and understanding, Lord, but we also understand that these promises come with the condition that they would seek you and that they would search you out and they would cry out to you lift up their voices and seek you as silver and search for you as for hidden treasures. Lord, I pray that they would see the treasure of knowing you. Lord, that the lust of the eyes would not steal their attention away from the one thing that matters. Father, give them hearts that are set towards you. I pray for encounters. Lord, as they hear the word, those who don't even know how to read, my sons don't know how to read yet, Lord, but they they know how to listen. Father, as they hear the scriptures sung, as they hear it in church, as they hear it at the table, as they hear it at bedtime, Father, that that there would be just an impartation of hunger and desire. Lord, you can impart impressions in their hearts. You can give them desire in their hearts to seek you, to want to know you, Lord. I pray from a young age, my children, my sons would want to know you. Lord, that they would make those vows in their heart to seek you out all the days of their life, to cry out to you. Lord, that their souls would not be satisfied until they find the knowledge of God. Lord, that the things of this earth that are fleshly and temporary and fading away would not numb their hearts to knowing you. Father, open their hearts to see the value of the beauty and the knowledge of the face of Christ Jesus, God, and the inheritance that 
his bride is to him, that they would see themselves, Lord, in, in light of your eternal story. Lord, that the word would not be a boring book of information to them, but it would be a doorway into discovering God, into encountering God. Lord, I pray that what they do know, they would treasure, and it would be written upon their hearts and upon their minds, that they would treasure your words, they would keep your words, they would obey your words. Lord, I pray for the fear of the Lord. I thank you for that promise that as they do this, as they seek you out, as they cry out to you, that your promise is that you will give them the fear of the Lord. Father, I pray for my wife and myself that we would be living examples, that we would be lights in our home of ones who hear the words of God and obey the words of God. Lord, that we would not be examples of ones who say do this and do that but not do them. Lord, I ask that you would give us first the fear of the Lord. That our children would walk carefully because they are keenly aware of your gaze upon their hearts. Lord, they're keenly aware of how their decisions and their choices affect their eternity. They would not walk with heaviness, Father, but they would be motivated by love to say yes to you in everything. Lord, draw them by the, by the knowledge of your Son. Draw them by his beauty, Father. Draw them by his presence. Lord, just as David sung to the Lord as a boy shepherd, Father, that my sons, would, their hearts would sing to you. Father, I pray that from a young age they would know they would know you. And I thank you, Lord, that from your mouth comes wisdom and understanding and knowledge. And I pray, Father, that they would not build their life upon the words of other men, that they would not quench their pursuit of your presence and of the knowledge of you by standing upon the doctrines of in the traditions of men father but they would have a holy curiosity that would guide their hearts into your presence into the place of prayer so father their lives and their faith would be completely established and built upon your words upon the knowledge that comes from your mouth lord it would not be another man's faith it would not even be their parents faith father it would not be my faith that they would have but they would have you the faith of Jesus Christ revealed to them by the Spirit of Christ himself. Lord, that they would be true witnesses in the earth because they have heard and they've tasted and they've seen and they've touched the living God himself, Lord, that this would be their life, that your words would be spirit and life inside of them. They would thirst for your words. They would hunger for your words. Father, I thank you, verse 7, that you store up sound wisdom for the upright and that you are a shield to those who walk uprightly, that you guard the path of justice and you preserve the way of your saints. Father, I thank you that you have stored up sound wisdom for my sons. You have stored up sound wisdom for me and my wife, Lord, for our family. Lord, that it's there for us. It has our name on it. Lord, I ask you to search us out and expose anything in our marriage, in our family, in our parenting that is not considered upright before you, that would disqualify us from receiving and walking into this promise and in, in receiving this stored wisdom. God, search us out. Search every person that's praying Lord, and I thank you that in your mercy you lead us into all truth and you're gentle and you're kind. Father, I pray that my sons would walk with integrity and uprightness. And I thank you that you are a shield to them. Lord, as they go through their teenager years, Father, as they become young men, that they would walk uprightly. They would walk with integrity. That integrity and uprightness would be 
the core conviction of their hearts that they would say no to ungodliness and worldly lust they would say no to peer pressure they would say no to the lust of the flesh and the pride of life and i thank you for being a shield to them god i pray that their confidence would not be upon in their own strength lord give them understanding that their security is in their walk with you that you are a shield to those who walk uprightly. Lord, thank you that you guard the paths of justice and you preserve the way of your saints. Lord, I thank you that when we walk with you, when we walk blameless before you, when we walk upright before you, we don't need to take justice in our own hands for ourselves, for you preserve us. You preserve our ways and you guard us us in the path of justice. You make our wrongs right. Lord, I pray that my sons would not take revenge. They would not be vengeful towards one another, even as toddlers and, and, and young children. God, they would learn to trust your justice. They would learn to give all things to you in the place of prayer and bless those who curse them. Do good to those who hate them, Lord. That their hearts would break for the sinner. Lord, I thank you for preserving their way as they walk in your way. And I thank you, Father, that as your saints walk in your way and as you preserve the path of justice that you promised, that then we would understand righteousness and justice, equity in every good path. Lord, we live in the time of a perverse generation that doesn't know their right hand from their left. They call good evil and evil good. And I pray that my sons, Father, that they would walk as the light of the Lord. That they would be lamps on, upon a lampstand. They would be a city upon a hill, as you said in Matthew. That they would understand righteousness and justice. They would not pervert it. They would not distort it. They would say no to bribery. But they would discern the good path every good path in every area of their lives that their friends would turn to them lord and for counsel that they would be trusted voices in their generation because they have walked uprightly and men have seen how you have been a shield to them and men have seen how you've guarded their past and preserved them and they would trust them as ones who understand righteousness and justice equity in every good path Lord, I thank you that you said when wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, discretion will preserve you and understanding will keep you to deliver you from the way of evil, from the man who speaks perverse things, and from those who leave the path of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. Father, I ask you to give my sons hearts that receive wisdom. I pray that you would give them a spirit of obedience, that you would arrange the circumstances, Lord, and not give them over to sinful desires, but, Father, that you would discipline them, that they would be your children, even as though you have entrusted us to parent them, Father. Show us how to parent them in such a way that we do it in the admonition and the nourishment of you, the Lord, so that wisdom does enter their heart. Lord, I pray that your law would pierced to the deepest places of their inner man, that it would be written upon the innermost places of their heart and it would become their DNA. It would become the spirit of their mind in everything that they do. I pray that they would have souls that find knowledge pleasant, that they would love instruction, that they would not despise correction, that they would see the wisdom in being rebuked and reproved so that they may grow that they would not be defensive or self-righteous, but walk in humility, Father. And I pray that with that comes a clear vision for what they want to be in God, that they would have a clear vision for what they want to pursue in you. And so the reproach washes off them and they take the gold from it because they have a vision to walk in righteousness. They have a vision of what it looks like to be men of God. Lord, I pray that they would provoke one another as brothers, that they would challenge and stir each other up to love and good works, that they would be a church in of themselves. 
And I thank you, Father, as they do this, that you will preserve them through discretion, that understanding will keep them. Lord, I pray they would not lean on their own understanding, but that they would be hungry for your understanding, that it's your understanding that is our shield. It's your understanding that is our guard, not what we know in our minds, but who we know, Father, that they would be completely open to you for whatever you want to say in every moment of the day and every point in their lives, that they would understand that you have grace for them, you have wisdom for them to get them out of every situation. You have wisdom for them to succeed in every situation. I thank you for your understanding, Father, keeping them. Keep them, Father. Guard them, Father. Deliver them, Father, from the way of evil. Teach them by your grace to deny the evil way, to say no to the wicked one. Deliver them, Father, from those who speak perverse things, that they would have filters of discretion and understanding that reject all perversity, that their tongues would be sanctified and consecrated to you to only speak that which is good for the need of the moment, that they, every word that they speak would be like an oracle of heaven. I pray that all their days, Father, that they would say yes to the ways of light and not the ways of darkness, that they would rejoice in doing good despise doing evil that they would not delight or find sport in the perversity of the wicked God they would hate lawlessness they would hate with a perfect hatred the ways of the wicked and they would rejoice in the truth Lord make them witnesses in their generation and Father I pray that you would deliver them from the spirit of seduction in all levels, Father, not just seduction that leads to Im sexual immorality, but seduction to pursue vanity, vain things. Lord, that they would recognize the offerings of the devil. They would recognize his schemes, Father. That they would recognize the voice of the stranger from the voice of their shepherd. That they would stay away from the flattering speech that, they, that their hearts would be on guard against the praise of men, against the lust for whatever it is. Or that any voice that is not yours, they would say no to and would only cling to your counsel. That they would be satisfied in you and you alone. That they would cling to the covenant of their God and not forget it. They would not forsake their friend, Jesus. But they would stand in his counsel and abide in his presence and keep his words. Lord, I pray that they would not just be ones who don't go pow, down the path of darkness, but they would have discernment to recognize it. They would be the voice of wisdom that cries out in the streets, that they would be ones who deliver souls. You said those who win souls are wise, that they would win the souls of their friends, the, win, the souls of family members. They would recognize the consequences of submitting and giving oneself to immorality and the spirit of seduction and that that path leads to death. And Father, they would save their friends from death that you would just give them, Father, favor with God and men so that when they speak, their words would be persuasive. They would carry weight. That young teenagers, even young middle schoolers, would listen to them as they grow up and take heed to their words and be convicted and be pierced in their hearts because your breath is coming through them. Your word is upon their tongue that's coming through them. Father, that less and less people would go down the path of the immoral woman to the house that leads to death and they would instead live and choose the path of life. I thank you for raising up, God, a generation of teenagers 
who take pride in purity, who take pride in seeking after the voice of Jesus and the presence of Jesus, who take pride in the satisfaction that comes from his presence, who recognize the incredible value that they are to him as consecrated vessels. Lord, I thank you that your way is the way of goodness. That you tell us to not go down that path, to say no to the seductive spirit. Not because you're trying to keep us from experiencing pleasure or wanting us just to be locked up and restrained, Father, but the end of your law is not restraint. The end of your law is joy. The end of your law is goodness. It's freedom. It's liberty. Father, I pray that our children, my sons, my wife, myself, that this principle would be established, deeply established in their heart, that they would not see the law as legalistic. They would see the law as freedom. They would understand the heart of their lawgiver, that they're that you desire them to experience goodness, that you want them to be blessed and happy, not just in the moment, but forever. God, move upon their hearts and upon their conscience. Strike their hearts with the fear of the Lord that they would walk in the path of righteousness and not deviate from it. Lord, I thank you for your promise. I thank you that my children shall be the upright who dwell in the land, Lord. That they will be the blameless who remain in it. That you shall be their shepherd and shall lead them to streams of living water. That they will not be uprooted or be like the wicked or that are like the chaff who do not stand in the congregation of the righteous. Father, but that they would be pillars in your temple. Lord, establish them in their communities. Establish them in their families. Establish them as leaders. Establish them as witnesses. Establish them as influencers. Establish them, God, as examples of righteousness, as rebuilders, as repairers. And I thank you, Lord, that they will not be cut off from the earth nor will they be uprooted, but they will dwell in the land and feed upon your faithfulness. So Lord, as we close this time of prayer, I thank you once again for your holy scriptures. I thank you for the Holy Spirit. I thank you that you hear us, that we have confidence because we do what pleases you, Lord, and we pray according to your heart. Lord, I pray for every family who is struggling, either in their marriage or with their children. Lord, and I just ask you to impart hope right now. I ask you to give them personal promises. Father, that there would be certain scriptures, even as we pray, that are highlighted to their spirit, that they can take hold of and that they would grasp and never let go. Lord, I thank you that the prayers, the fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. And that you have infinite ways to move and to soften a hardened heart, Lord. If only you keep knocking on the door of their hearts. And so I ask you to strengthen us, to pour out a spirit of prayer that we would not quit. Strengthen us in prayer. Strengthen us to keep taking these promises to you. Strengthen us to pray with greater precision, greater confidence, more faith. Lord, send encouragement to every heart of every praying mother and father, husband and wife. In Jesus' name. Well, thank you for praying with me from Proverbs 2. I hope this time of prayer encouraged you. I hope you prayed with me. I hope the Lord highlighted certain promises to you. And I look forward to praying again from Proverbs, from Proverbs chapter 3. So stay tuned. Please subscribe to the channel. Press the like button. This is going to help you stay connected when these podcasts are uploaded. And once again, if you enjoy the music, the background music, please click the link in the video description below. 
and that will take you to the, uh, the music that I created for this podcast. Once again, thank you for listening, and I bless you in the name of Jesus.